today. So good to see you here, and you know what? <clears throat> I am excited about what God is doing. Glad to be a part of the church in 2019. I realize the world seems like it may be upside down, but God's still on the throne, and he's still all-powerful. We're going to start the service with prayer, but before we do, I have a praise report. We've been praying, and I give God uh, praise for answering prayers. He's done so many. Brother Caden is well, feels better. He says he's forgotten so long since he's been uh, felt this good. He's forgot how it, how it felt, but he uh, finally has got rid of all the stones and he's got rid of the pancreatitis and he's able to function. I also want to give uh, prayer praise for Brother Tracy Newman. He we're still going to continue praying for him, but uh, he has went to the uh, doctor this week for another treatment on his eye, and they give him uh, shots, laser shots into his eye. Of course, he had uh, pretty much lost sight in the uh, one eye. However, and it comes and goes, it's not regular, but this week while he was there to get his uh, shots in his eye, his vision in that eye was 20-50 which is way better than it had ever been in a long time, in several months. The doctor said, I don't know what's happening. I don't know how it's happening. He said, whatever y'all are doing, keep doing. They said, we're praying, and we're doing a lot of praying. He said, just keep it up because it's working, and I give God the praise for that. <laughs> it's still by no means well, and that vision has not stayed that good the whole time, but I, I am thankful and have hope that it all be restored. And we're going to keep praying for him. We're going to keep believing that God's going to keep moving. Also, Alan's story is home. He's home from Texas. He'd been there for several weeks for treatment. He is home now. Still having some serious complications, but let's continue to pray for him. Sister Rogers and Katie, let's continue to pray for them. That Lord touch them both. Uh, Gary Miles, he's also home from Texas but he still needs God to intervene. He's still got some pretty serious treatments ahead of him. We want God to move for him. Uh, Mr. Butch Parnell, it's so good to have him in service with us today, but we're gonna keep praying for him. He's got some uh, more doctor visits this week and we're asking God to move in those. Sister Couples needs a touch. Sister Helen Sellers, we would love for her to be able to eat back. Uh, Wayne Ferris, uh, got bone scan scheduled for just a couple of weeks away and he needs the touch of the Lord. He's also facing surgery, uh, cancer surgery in the very near future. Sister Gail's sister Peggy still needs a touch from the Lord. Jeff Thornburg's mother, let's continue to pray for her. Natalie uh, Cantrell has had some uh, uh, setbacks from her surgery and some issues with that. Let's continue to pray for her. Aren't you glad we got a God that can? Amen. Aren't you glad we got a God that will? Aren't you glad we got a God that we hears? Amen. He hears our request. He can do anything and he will do it if we bring it to him. Do you have a request of any kind? Slip your hand up. The Lord knows what it is. He understands your heart today. There's a host of names on the screen behind me. There's many names in your bulletin. There's a God that's bigger than all these problems. So I would like for him to move in each one of these, but really we need him to speak into this service today. Don't you want the moving of his spirit here among us? If you, have, if you will, join with me right now on your feet and let's take these knees to the Lord in prayer. God in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we humbly come before you asking you to reach down and to move in each one of these knees. We know, God, that you're able. God, we know that you can and reach down and perform as only you can. Show your power. Show your abilities. Lord, I ask that you also just Take this service and let it be exactly what you want it to be. Let your anointing rest upon every song that is sang, every word that is spoken. Let your glory fill this place today. God, we look to you for help, for leadership, and for direction. Meet with us today. God, and when we leave here, let us leave here rejoicing in you. For this, we'll be careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our worship team's going to lead us in worship. Let's just forget about all of our problems for a little while and let's focus upon worshiping the King of Kings for the next little bit. Thank you.
come to praise Him this morning. We've come to praise Him.
that. He had started to stink. His situation smelled terrible. But when Jesus stepped in, something started moving. Something started changing. His life was restored. His situation became what it never should have been. He never should have walked back out of that grave. But he did because something started moving. Something started changing. Heaven stepped into that tomb. Oh, David, he was a little man up against a big giant. But the difference was heaven stepped in. Heaven stepped into that situation and down came Goliath. So today I want you to let heaven step in. Something will move. Something will change. Lightning and thunder will light up your situation. So today why don't you let a little heaven in the room with you. Let a little heaven touch you. Let a little heaven move upon you. so much with a song and signing and it was such a blessing and during our family teaching we we're looking at different aspects of the family unit and I'm thankful for every part of the family you know what it's not much of a family that don't have a mom in it it's not much of a family that ain't got a dad in it it's not much of a family that ain't got children but I'm thankful we've got all of it amen and this week, our college and career and youth is going to come. Some of them is going to sing. Some may testify. Some probably won't be in doing anything. But we want to be blessed by them today. I want them just to come on this way. And we will uh, le listen to what they've got to say for a few moments today. And God bless them. Let's welcome them today. Hasn't God been good? Well, I know y'all have seen um, what's happened with me in the past couple weeks, and y'all have been reading about it, and I just wanted to testify here for a minute, and I want to let y'all know just how good God is. I've figured out here lately that, you know, some of these trials that we face, some things that God puts in your life, it's not because of anything you've done. It's not anything you deserve, and it's nothing you should get upset about. God's doing it for a purpose. I knew from the moment that I was put in the hospital and they told me I had a blockage that I had not known about for two weeks that it was something that God was going to use for his glory. I had that feeling that if I had faith, God was going to show me something through that. And I never lost that faith. You know, I grinned the whole time because I knew something was going to happen. I'm not going to lie. I knew something was going to happen. I went in there, and they hooked me up. They were, you know, they were shook too. They didn't know what was going on because all I was supposed to have was kidney stones. And then I come in there, and I'm grabbing my heart and felt like I was about to fall on the floor. And they was like, Lord, child, you got too many things going wrong with you. <laughs> no, they were scared, too. But it turned out I had a blockage in between my liver and my pancreas, and I also had pancreatitis. So I was in rough shape. Well, it was about to be a really rough surgery. They were about to go down my throat with a tube and a camera 
and a very sharp tool and they were going to cut the inside of where my gallbladder was to cut out a huge blockage the doctor was scared of this procedure he sent me back to the procedure room and i was getting prepared for two hours straight the nurses were all just you know trying to talk me up telling me you know you got this you know you you love god don't you i said yes ma'am you know i do and we were sitting back there just talking well the doctor come in the room about 20 minutes before this was supposed to happen and he said let's not do this and they sent me back he said i just want to get another mri well i went back to the room i got another mri done and when that mri came back that blockage was gone completely clear Not only that, I was not supposed to get out of the hospital for a week after that because of my pancreatitis. I was out in two days. And for that, I give God the glory. I just want to tell you today, don't give up on the things that happen to you because it's not your fault. It's for God's glory. Brother Evan. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm not as good as Caden. I had to type a few things out so I didn't forget. Well, Andrea told me I only had 30 seconds to talk, so I'll try and keep this short. Uh, I can't possibly tell everything that the Lord's done for me. We'd be here all day and all week longer than that. Um, but as I was thinking of what I was going to testify about this morning, uh, outside of my greatest blessing is being uh, receiving the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I guess one of them would be my church family, you guys. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for y'all, and specifically a few of you sitting here today, and Brother Josh, I don't know where uh, I don't know where I'd be at today. Um, and I think each and every one of us sitting here could say the same thing because we've all dealt with situations, our own certain situations, that without the church, it probably would be a lot different outcome on some situations. Um, and not just our church, us in the community as well, and helping other people, and just not our own. Um, I'm thankful, uh, more importantly, for the Lord and what he's done, because without him, I wouldn't be standing up here today. Um, I'm also thankful for uh, Brother Josh. I think we have a pastor that's not afraid to tell us how it is, even when it's hard to hear sometimes. Um, uh, and I'm just thankful that we can come here and gather today because I know there's there's many places that this isn't possible uh, to do. Um, well, I'll shut up before uh, Andrea throws something at me. So uh, if the rest of uh, college and career can make their way up, it's going to sing today. Y'all worship with us. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. 
even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. I know that you love me Your love never fails The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not a loner in these open seas Your love never fails The chasm is far too wide Stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things Work together for my good You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid I know that you love me Your love never fails Didn't they do a great job? I enjoyed the testimonies too One more time, let's hear it for our youth college career Go ahead and remain standing if you like. Our ushers be making their way to the front. We're fixing to receive our tithing offering. And you know what? Let me quickly say that family teaching is still going on through Father's Day. And you don't want to miss it. Remember, your family's worth the investment. Be here at 10 o'clock each Sunday for family teaching. There won't be any service here tonight. We're having a picnic. Shrimp, fish, crawfish, hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries. All that's here for you this evening at 5 o'clock. We'll eat somewhere around that time. It might not be exactly at 5, but come. There'll be things for the kids to do. It'll be a great evening here at the church. We expect you here. Hope that you'll come. If you want to bring a dessert, please do. We would like to have some dessert, but you know what? If you can't bring a dessert, just come and eat. We're going to have plenty of food. Also, we're having a baptism at the end of service today. Our children are fixing to be dismissed after we, when we start the offering. Actually, children, if y'all want to, go ahead and be dismissed and go on to uh, Super Church. Those are Part of them are not out here, but part of them are here, and we welcome them. Glad to have them today.
But we'll have a baptism at the end of service today, so don't get in too big of a rush. I'm excited. We're going to be baptizing uh, Brother Parnell today in the, in, for the remission of sins, and I'm excited about that. Been talking to him, praying with him, and believing that God is doing a great work in his life. <clears throat> We're going to give unto the Lord today as he has prospered us. If he's given you blessings, it's time to bless him. Amen? So we give. We give our tithe and offering unto the Lord, and I promise you, you can't outgive God. We'll march as we give today. Walk out of the right end of your pew around to the front and back into the left end of your pew. Even if you don't have anything to give, I invite you just to come by and give God praise when you come around the front. Today, he's worthy of all of our praise. If these men of music can play us a musical, we'll start a giving now. with us. You can be seated if you'd like. The writer of Ecclesiastes, which most of us would probably agree that it was Solomon, even though it's been argued that it could have been someone else write this, but he started out in uh, chapter 1 and he said in verse 2, vanities of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is Vanity. The writer at this point had already aged. He is over in the years. He was looking back upon life and he was realizing the important things of life really didn't come in stuff. It's hard for us to grasp that when we're 18 and 19 years old. It's hard for us to realize that in our early 20s. But I want you to understand that as you get older, things doesn't matter near as much as they did. It's always good to have nice things. It's always good to have good things, but you change your emphasis. All it takes is a bad diagnosis or a trip to the hospital. In fact, just in Sunday school this morning, Sister Tristel was requesting prayer for someone who just went to the emergency room and got there and found out they had multiple kinds of cancer just from just a mere trip to the emergency room. You realize that suddenly that things didn't matter as much. Vanity, all is vanity. We read on down in chapter one, verse four, said one generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth and Sun goeth down and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually and the wind returneth again according to its circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yea, the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. All things are full of labor. 
Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing. In other words, I pause here just to tell you that life is a cycle. Most of you were born without your teeth and several of you die without them. Life is a cycle. It just keeps going around and around. He talks about how that the wind, it may come down from the north, but then it goes back to the north and then it comes back around. The sun rises and then it sets, but it quickly comes back to where it rose from. It's setting to get back to that place. The rains come, the waters rise, they run into the sea then the waters rise and go into the clouds and go back and bring more rain. You are born, you live on this life and it is easy for you to chase after the wrong thing and to grab for the wrong things. But if you study all of Ecclesiastes, he goes through and he tells all the different things and then his final chapter, chapter 12, he addresses in verse one, and I come from this phrase today to begin with these great people, these young people that have been here and not only here on the platform, but those of you that are sitting in the pews and maybe you're not so young, but it will do you good to hear what the Lord's given me today anyway. But Ecclesiastes 12 verse one says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. I wish that you could understand how important God is when you're young. Amen. You will chase after everything. I'm going to talk to you young people for a little bit, but it's going to be good for all of us. You will chase after a lot of things, but in the end, all that really is going to matter is him. Amen. You will run for a lot of different circles of life and they're just going to keep on circling. When you pass, guess what? The wind's going to keep blowing. The sun's going to keep coming up and going down. The water's going to keep falling from the sky, running to the sea and going back to the sky. He, and all that will really matter is him. If I keep reading from Ecclesiastes there, that verse one says, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. If you read it from the, another version, it said, remember your creator in the days of your life or your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Today I want to talk to us on finding life in him. I am the first one to encourage you to get a good education. I'm proud we have several of our uh, students that are continuing their education and going further. Some are doing different things. I encourage that. I encourage you to find a goodly spouse. I think that's important. A godly person, someone that fears God, someone that reverences God. But again, all that won't amount to anything if you don't find him most. Amen. And I realize that in the culture and in the era of time that we live in, that there is very little emphasis put on God and the church, especially in this younger generation. And it's so easy for us to get caught up with the things of the world and the things of life that we don't look to him like we should. It's so easy for us to chase after the things of the world that we forget how important he really is. 
It's so easy for us to catch the dream or to chase the dream that we all have. And I believe that God instills into us a drive to reach for good things and to have good things. But it's so easy for us to catch the dream of having all these other things that we forget seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But I've come this morning to tell somebody, if you just put God first, if you just reach for God more than anything, else. I can assure you that he will add to you all the other things that's out there. You can't have happiness without him, but you can't help but happen to have happiness if you've got him. You can't have peace without him, but you can't help but have peace if you've got him. Come on, folks. I want to remind you of what Peter was writing. He said in 1 Peter chapter 1, he said, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, young people. The revelation of Jesus Christ is the greatest revelation that you ever have. There's not but one way to escape this world. There's not but one way to escape the damnation of hell, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else is going to matter. So remember in the days of your youth, remember your creator. He goes on to say, and he said, I want you to do as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy. It may not be popular today. He said, but even as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Hear me tonight. You don't need to be talking about things you don't need to be talking about. Come on. I don't care what the lyrics of the latest song has got to say. If it ain't holy conversation, it don't need to be spewing out of your mouth. If it ain't holy lyrics, it don't need to be being put inside your ears. I'm telling you, what we need is a revival of holiness. We don't need the latest fad. We don't need the latest fashion. But we need to be holy before God. The very next verse says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. We've got to have holiness in our life if we're going to be pleasing to God. You won't hear this on the radio that you're listening to when you're driving down the road. You may not get it off the television or off of Netflix or whatever else you may be viewing, but I'm going to tell you, I believe it's my duty as the pastor of this church to tell somebody we still have to have holy conversation. We still have to have holiness in our dress. We still have to have holiness in our lifestyle. We still got to be what God wants us to be. You can't leave this world without it unless you're going to be down to hell. I'm going to go ahead and be plain today because I want you to go to heaven. I watched as a bunch of talent was up here on our platform. I heard young men that could speak the praises of God. I realized that there was others that didn't even step up here that are just as talented and can have just as good of abilities. But I want you to understand something. It may seem old fashioned, it may seem out of date, but sin is still sin. And just because the world is accepting it, I'm telling you, God's not gonna accept it. You've got to be holy before God or you won't be pleasing to God. Romans chapter one. Paul was writing, and I realized that Paul was old-fashioned, but he had a walk with God that you young people should cherish. Come on. He said, verse 16, I am not ashamed 
of the gospel of Christ. I may have to look like everybody else. I may not be able to fit in the crowd where everybody else is fitting in. I may not be able to participate in what the masses are participating, but I'm proud of who I am. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Young people, if you can understand one thing today, you should be proud that God's called you out and give you a chance at a holy lifestyle. You should be proud that you don't have to deal with the pressures of this world when you accept holiness as your lifestyle. You don't have to worry about all those pressures. He said, I'm not ashamed for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. It didn't stop in 20,000. It didn't stop in 1900. It didn't stop when Paul died. It's still the gospel of salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I quickly keep reading, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And as is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Listen, you don't hear this every day. But the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all. We can't just pick a few sins and say that God's going to rain judgment on it. He's going to have wrath against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his external power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, there is no excuse for ungodliness or unrighteousness. I keep reading. Because that, when they knew God, Remember the creator in the days of thy youth. Remember the creator in the days of thy youth. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. I'm telling you, you ought to be proud you're apostolic. You ought to be proud of the truth. You ought to be proud that you're not like everybody else. Come on. They neither were thankful. Come on. He said, they but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made to a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beast and creeping things. Can I just tell you, I have nothing against nature. But when we worship nature more than we worship God, that's what he's talking about right here. When you become such a naturalist that all you can do is worship nature, I'm telling you, you have turned your vain imaginations from God and turned it into unrighteousness. There's not but one Lord and it ain't no tree. There's not but one faith and it's not the science, Scientology. Come on, there's one Lord and there's one faith and one baptism. You might not find this everywhere else, but I'm telling you, this is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and I'm not ashamed of who I am. <laughs> 24 says, God also gave them up done cleanness. It gets deeper, folks. Through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Can I just pause right here to tell you that adultery is still a sin? Fornication is still a sin? 
homosexuality is still a sin. I'm not here to hate on nobody. I'm here to tell you the love of God can change anybody, but I'm also gonna be guilty of telling you that the Bible says you can't do these things and be pleasing to God. He said, who changed the truth of God into a lie. A preacher that will get up and tell you it's okay for these things is lying to you. Come on. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for every, even their women did change this natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Hear me this morning. You being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetous, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them. I've come today to tell you, it's still sin in 2019. <laughs> Leave that verse there for just a second. This last phrase, this last phrase, you probably don't hear this down the road at the other church, but when you can get all giddy and think it's cute for somebody having a, a fornication affair or having adulterous affair or having a homosexuality relationship. You're taking pleasure in it. You're just as guilty of sin as they are. It's the word, folks. It's the word. I'm telling you, I... I'm not hating on sinners. I'm loving sinners enough to tell them the truth. Come on. I'm not hating on people, but I'm telling you one thing. I'm not condoning sin because I've got a heaven to gain. And I realize if I'm gonna make it to heaven, it's gonna be because I have been pleasing to him. Hear me. We get so caught up in the pressure of the times that we will accept. Oh, I would never participate. But we'll let them tell us all about it. Come on. I would never, I'd never be a part of that, but We'll sure listen to everything, every bit of the juicy details that they can tell us about what they're doing. Come on. I'm telling you, folks, I ain't got time for sin. I, I'm not gonna be mean and I'm not gonna be ugly to nobody. In fact, I'm gonna love every one of them. I'm gonna love them and I'm gonna care for them, but I'm gonna love them as long as I can pray with them and talk to them and help them. But I'm not gonna take pleasure in their sin. I'm not, if I take pleasure in their sin, I might as well be participating in their sin. Come on. One of the biggest issues, and I, I'll just go ahead and address it. Well, I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on it anyway, I might as well, since I'm already this deep. One of the biggest issues we've got is we've got a bunch of girls nowadays that thinks it's so cool to have gay friends. Again, I've got friends that are gay, but I don't, I don't 
want to hear about their lifestyle. I want to tell them about my God. Come on. It ain't cute to me. It ain't cute to me. I'm telling you, folks, you better wake up and realize when you think it's cute, you're accepting it. You're embracing it. And I'm telling you, it's just as sin for you as it is for them. The truth is the truth, folks. You didn't get, aren't you glad I took up the offer before now? (laughs) Hear me. I'm quickly going to close because we're fixing to do a baptism. But here, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians. Actually, I'm just going to back up. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm read this first. I'm going to be real quick. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. That's something that God hates. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these things, in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. It's sad for me to have to stand in the pulpit and preach against bestiality. But the reason we have such a rash of homosexuality in this age is because we had preachers that wouldn't preach against it in the era before. And they're linked together. Come on. And it's all defiling and God hates it. It's abomination. I quickly go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Come on. I don't care what they tell you at school. I don't even care what they hand out to you. If you're living for God, you don't need no morning after pill. Come on. This is the truth, folks. If you're living for God, you don't have to worry about catching those communicable diseases. This is the truth. If you're living for God, you don't have to worry about getting addicted to the things of this world. You just better straighten up and fly right. He's coming back after a church that's made themselves ready. Let's get ready to meet our Lord. He said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Can I just pause and say this? We don't need girls that's acting like guys and we don't need guys that's acting like girls. We need men to be men and women to be women. (laughs) Folks, this is the truth. It's not popular, but it's the truth. He said, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's your homosexuals. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. Again, let me just pause and tell you something. You ain't gonna make it to heaven when you're getting drunk on Saturday night and sitting on the church pew on Sunday morning. You better get that out of your system. Nor revilers, nor extortioners, None of these is going to inherit the kingdom of God. And let me tell you something. God has a purpose for you and it's not in the world of sin. God's got a purpose for you and it's not in the bed of fornication. God's got a purpose for you and it's not in a relationship of homosexuality. God's got a calling for you and it's in the kingdom of God. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter one and I'm going to close. Who hath saved us? Oh, thank God he saved us and called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hear me this morning. 
God has a purpose for your life. God has a reason for your existence. God has a place for you in his kingdom. And it's not in the pits of the sins that I've been preaching about. But it's in the kingdom of God. So I quickly go back and tell you this. Remember thy creator in the days of your youth. Sell out to God. Dedicate yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. Let God be your God. Let God be real in your life. And I promise you, you will go further than anybody else. Stand with me this morning. God in heaven, thank you for every one of these that's been here today. Thank you, Lord, that you have allowed them to be in the house of the Lord to worship you today. God, I ask that you just take this word, let it speak into their heart, speak into their mind. Let it stay with them, oh God. The holy word of God. Let it keep them from the vices of this world. Let it keep them from the snags of Satan. Let it keep them from the deceiving of the lies of this culture. And help them, Lord, to live holy and righteous and godly, even in this present world. For this, we'll be careful to give you praise in Jesus' name.